Screams of terror were drowned out by the clamor of crumbling buildings and cars being hurtled through the air only to land in crushed heaps, narrowly missing horrified bystanders. But there were a few even louder noises coming from above, ones that were so utterly nightmarish and completely deafening that everyone around had no hope of ignoring them. First came a roar, a guttural growling that caused the ground to shake like the tremors building up to an earthquake. Then there was a whistle, shrill and high-pitched, shattering glass and drilling into people's ears until it made them ring. The kind of whistle you'd expect to find on a steam train. Towering high above, the same height as the tallest of nearby skyscrapers, was a sight that spelled doom for everyone running for their lives below. Huge, sinewy spider legs stomped upon the ground, at times simultaneously standing in eight different streets at once. And in the middle, connected by all of them, was the body of a horrifying creature. It had a twisted face, unnaturally white eyes, and rows upon rows of teeth. Atop its body, shredded and bent out of its original shape, were the remains of an old red steam engine. Choo Choo Charles was back, and bigger than ever. Since his initial defeat, someone had managed to successfully resurrect Charles, much to the horror of everyone on the island of Araniram. Just when they thought they were free from the half-giga-spider, half-train's reign of terror, they had witnessed Choo Choo Charles's unnatural rebirth as he returned to exact revenge on the islanders. But Charles' return was made all the worse by the fact that the monstrous locomotive had more than tripled in size. Some of those living on Araniram tried their very best to fight off Choo Choo Charles as his spindly legs crawled up the shore back onto the island he called his home. But others quickly realized how futile fighting back was and tried their best to abandon Araniram as quickly as they possibly could, although some weren't so lucky to make it away in time. Skittering across the island, the enlarged spider creature was able to use his newly elongated legs to lower himself to ground level. His deadly jaws, filled with more rows of razor-sharp teeth than a shark, opened as survivors on Araniram tried desperately to outrun their oncoming doom. But a nightmare on eight legs can move faster than a person on two. Some of the fleeing residents tripped and stumbled over, sealing their terrible fate once and for all. Before they could clamber back to their feet and keep running, Choo Choo Charles was upon them. They turned to see his descending jaws, the jagged edges of his teeth, as he lowered himself just enough to capture the terrified islanders and devour them on the spot. There was no chance of escape. Their scream silenced the very second that the monster's jaws snapped shut. Now that he was far bigger than he'd been in his powerful Hell Charles form, the man-eating locomotive could scour the breadth of Araniram in mere minutes, scurrying over the small landmass as he hunted down the remaining survivors. Some took the only option they had left and hid away in the caves that ran underneath the surface of the island, but anyone unlucky to still be above ground was quickly chomped by Choo Choo Charles. As he ate, the spidery steam engine got even stronger. The size of his creepy, crawly legs increased, allowing him to make it across the island even faster. But such meager morsels of human flesh weren't enough anymore. Being bigger had made him hungrier, and before long, he had picked the whole of Araniram clean, save for the lucky few who had survived in the caverns below. With an insatiable appetite and a bloodlust that couldn't be controlled, the gigantic half-spider, half-train turned his attention away from the island he'd inhabited for so long. Hardly any of its residents were left, and the ones that were cowered in fear underground. But there were plenty more people out there than just the ones who lived on Araniram. On the mainland, Charles could feast on human flesh forever. Charging across Araniram, his sizable spider legs demolishing the few wooden shacks that were still standing as he rushed by, he tore through the ground with his scratchy limbs before using all his newfound strength to hurl himself up into the air. In a huge leap off the ground that made the whole island of Araniram shudder, Choo Choo Charles dove into the water and began to propel himself forward with his many limbs. It took only a few hours for the carnivorous creature to swim his way towards the nearest landmass. Although he didn't know or care where he was, Choo Choo Charles was rapidly swimming towards one of the most densely populated cities in the world, New York City. Watching from the New York Harbor, people were quick to spot the sight of what looked like a battered old red steam train breaking the surface of the Hudson River. Some assumed it was a bit of fun, some sailor playing a practical joke. A few even got their phones out to film it as the train started heading right towards them. Leaping out from the seabed, Choo Choo Charles came crashing down in Manhattan 
with enough force to cause a miniature earthquake. Cars were flipped over or crushed underneath his long, spidery legs, while the windows of nearby buildings were shattered at the force of the impact. This place was unlike the barren, mostly deserted island of Araniram where Charles had previously lived. It was filled with tall buildings, some that towered high above the locomotive creature himself, even at his new height. The streets were narrow, but they were filled with people, more than he'd ever find back on the island. He was cumbersome moving around this urban jungle, but there was plenty of food right there for the taking, and Choo Choo Charles' bloodlust caused him to charge straight down the nearest street. Crawling between two tight rows of buildings, Charles began to feast, getting down to street level and chomping on cars, trucks, lampposts, and anyone unlucky enough to be on the sidewalk as the murderous train monster came through. But as he crawled, it seemed there was little space for Charles's enormous spider legs. Suddenly, as he shifted himself, Charles sent his limbs crashing into the side of a nearby building, cracking it open like an egg. A huge shower of rubble came raining down on the monstrosity. Before long, the entire building had toppled over. In a matter of seconds, the horrifying creature rampaging through the streets seemed to have suddenly been buried underneath the collapsed structure. The dust settled. People who had only moments ago been fleeing all suddenly stopped, turning around to take a look at the incredible display of destruction. Some foolishly thought that the beast was slain already by its own hand, buried under the rubble of the building it had just accidentally demolished. But it didn't take long for them to be proven wrong. Bursting out from beneath the fallen building, Charles let out a mighty roar, turning his angered attention once again to the innocent bystanders on the street. He lunged, catching another mouthful of pedestrians and feasting. The horrific creature began to grow again, knocking over yet another building, but in the opposite direction this time. He watched as it fell away from him, perhaps realizing he could push more and more structures over with his spidery limbs the bigger he became. And that's exactly what Choo Choo Charles started to do. Charles began tearing through the city, toppling buildings like dominoes and leaving nothing but death and destruction in his wake. His rampage was like a steamroller flattening the entire metropolis, raising any standing structure to the ground, turning them all into piles of rubble and debris as he knocked them out of his way with his multiple legs. Citizens of New York City fled in horrified droves, as small as ants when compared to the huge stature of the rampaging monster that was ransacking the city. Many abandoned their cars in the middle of the street and ran for their lives, only for the vehicles to be smashed into piles of scrap or hurled out of the way, or even swallowed whole if they were in the path of Choo Choo Charles. Screams filled the streets. Innocent bystanders were suddenly finding themselves knocked over as people clamored over one another to get as far away from the towering, part train, part tarantula as they could. But it wasn't far enough. All it took was stumbling over or missing a step or even just moving slightly too slow, and that was it. Charles would swoop in and devour his frightened victims. People had hardly any choice. They could either stand there and accept their cruel fate, or do whatever they could to try and get away. Not that attempts to escape typically yielded any better results. It took a few hours, although nobody was really keeping track all that closely. Everyone was too busy trying to get out of New York as fast as humanly possible. Some did. Those who were far enough across the city from the harbor to hear about the approaching danger and drive away before Choo Choo Charles reached their burrow, but hardly anyone closer stood a chance of escape, not on foot, nor by car, or even trying to board a boat going down the Hudson River. In a matter of mere hours, Choo Choo Charles had wiped an entire city off the map and grown even larger than before as he picked New York clean of survivors. The city that never sleeps had now fallen still, laying in ruins at Charles's feet all eight of them. And to make matters worse, the creature had continued mutating as it devastated the Big Apple. He was easily a hundred times the size he had been when he roamed around the island of Araniram, pursuing and devouring the few humans he came across there. But now, Choo Choo Charles was far bigger, an utterly unstoppable force of destruction, with the entire world laid out before him, a world that was completely underprepared to defeat a multi-story spider creature. Jersey and Hoboken were next after New York had fallen, and they took far less time for Charles to annihilate. By the time he hit Jersey City, the tyrannical, towering train spider was actually met with some resistance. The U.S. military had been witnessing Choo Choo Charles' rampage and had been desperately deliberating on what they could possibly do to deter the creature. The beast hide seems totally impenetrable. He must be impervious to all forms of conventional weaponry. We simply don't have the firepower to eliminate him. We may not need to, sir. We know two things. The creature came from the sea and also appears to be reactive. 
If we can figure out some way to get his attention, we might be able to nudge him back to the water. Of course, this nudge came in the form of a full-on assault against Choo Choo Charles. The army threw their combined might at the monster. Bullets had no effect, tank shells barely left a scratch, even bombs dropped from fighter jets seemed to only enrage Charles further. But as he tore his way through New Jersey, the army kept up their continuous attacks. The barrage of munitions wasn't harming Charles, but it was having somewhat of the intended effect. They were gradually driving him eastwards, back towards the Atlantic Ocean. Seeing the enormous half-steam train, half-super spider lumbering overhead terrified the life out of anyone that saw it. Choo Choo Charles had grown exponentially and was now the size of several cities. His movement had slowed. Nobody was sure if it was because he was so much larger that it gave everyone the perspective that he was moving with a decreased speed. Or was Charles actually slowing down, getting more and more exhausted the bigger he got? The army had driven Charles almost right up to the Jersey Shore. The blue of the Atlantic was no more than a few strides away from the gigantic, carnivorous spider monster. All of a sudden, there came the deafening cacophony of buckling metal. Although it was so high up now that the sound didn't carry down to anyone at ground level, but up in the clouds, Charles heard it. His outer train shell was coming apart, and the creature himself was struggling to maintain consciousness. Call it indigestion, overeating, or simply just growing too big. But whatever it was, it had seemed to take its toll on Choo Choo Charles. As the army nudged him out past the shore and into the water, his gigantic legs started to weaken. Then, slowly, Choo Choo Charles toppled downwards, crashing face first into the ocean with an almighty splash. To the relief of all involved, the demonic train was defeated and plunged to the deepest depths of the Atlantic Ocean. But the damage he'd left in his wake wouldn't be forgotten anytime soon.